Warning, Kind of Murdery contains adult themes, explicit language, and descriptions of violence. It is not suitable for anyone, and we recommend you stop listening now. Hello everyone, and welcome to Kind of Murdery a true crime podcast that's mostly about murder and always about the strange and compelling stories that arise when the path less traveled twists to darkness and those who walk its shadows surrender to violence and moral corruption. We have a perilous journey ahead, so thank you for lending me your courage and good company. I'm your host, Zevin Odelberg, and this is Kinda Murdery. You know, the information age is a wonderful thing, Perhaps less wonderful, but certainly entertaining for those of us who enjoy kind of murdery, is the fact that human beings are truly, absurdly, murdery. I made an interesting discovery researching this episode, and it's simply this. People are so murdery that you can Google nearly any word alongside the word murder and you're likely to come up with results. In other words, you pick the theme, there's been a murder that occurred that corresponds. I was in a lighthearted mood when I first started researching this episode, so the first term I searched for was hilarious crimes, which led me to a Rolling Stone article entitled, The 10 Most WTF, that's what the fudge, crimes of 2017. It's not actually fudge, but you know, no need to get gratuitous. This 10 most WTF crimes of 2017 article was written by Joe Vikes, and as always, all my sources are in the show notes. One of the crimes outlined in the article was the story of a man who was released from police interrogation and not even charged because his farts were just too nasty for the questioning detective to endure. That's right, set free by flatulence. But more on that later. After chuckling at this case of good fortune and bad gas, I then, on a lark, not expecting to get anything back, googled the phrase, fart murder. And that's when I learned what I alluded to at the very top. People are so murdery that it doesn't really matter what you pair the word murder with. Somebody has almost certainly killed for exactly that reason, whatever it is. Which brings us to today's episode, where I will be uncovering what truths I can and solving what mysteries I may, as we explore a series of short true crime stories all about the kind of murdery consequences of passing gas. Kind of murderies. Fart Murder starts now. Of course, I'm fully aware that the theme of this episode is incredibly immature, stupid even, but these are true stories and I do hope you enjoy them as much as I did. I think today's kind of murdery is going to be an absolute blast. All right, we're going to start off with the story that inspired the episode and that I'm calling Fart Out of Jail Free Card. Now, generally, when you're being interrogated by the police, it's best to keep your mouth shut unless you have a lawyer by your side. But maybe, just maybe, there's another, more fragrant way to get out of trouble. Sean Sykes Jr., a 24-year-old resident of Kansas City, was riding in a car in 2017 when police found drugs and two handguns, so he was taken in for further questioning. When a detective asked Sykes about his address, he, quote, leaned to one side of his chair and released a loud fart before answering with the address, unquote. The detective wrote in his report about the interrogation. The barrage of farts continued, and according to the detective, he, quote, continued to be flatulent, and I ended the interview, unquote. Though he was not charged, Sykes was pulled over two months later, Police allegedly found crack and a stolen gun in his car, and it seemed likely that he wouldn't be able to fart his way out of trouble a second time. So that's Fart Out of Jail Free Card. Next up, we have a series of stories of assault, attempted murder, and actual murder inspired by flatulence. And while the inciting incident in each of these cases is the same, that incident being a fart, not all these stories are as funny as their shared reason for existing. The first one occurred in 2011, in Bristol, Connecticut, where a man was being held on murder and assault charges after allegedly stabbing four people, one fatally because partygoers were making fun of his farts. Police said Mark Higgins, 21, left a party and returned with three knives, stabbing people indiscriminately, according to court documents. 
The Hartford Current, quoting those documents, reported that Higgins told the police he was angry at being derided and wanted to teach people that they shouldn't trifle with him. Higgins appeared in court, was charged with murder, assault, and carrying a dangerous weapon, and was held in lieu of a $2 million bond. Next fart up, a case of fart-inspired teenage murder from Ohio in 2012. A 16-year-old Ohio girl was killed, and another teenager charged with murder, all over a fart joke. Police say that the victim, Shakira Dorsey, teased the suspect about passing gas, which led to the two girls fighting. During the fight, Dorsey collapsed and died shortly thereafter. Dorsey's stepfather was at the fight and witnessed the girl's death. He now faces questions as to what he was doing at the fight and whether he encouraged his daughter to fight the other girl. Police say they responded to a 911 call about the fight, and when they arrived, the fight was long over, but medical personnel were attending to Dorsey. Witnesses say that Dorsey was suffering from shortness of breath after the fight and collapsed. While the other girl's been charged with murder, the focus of attention shifted to the role Dorsey's stepfather played in the fight. Based on Facebook and Twitter posts, it was reported that the stepfather took Dorsey to the fight. When questioned by police, he admits driving his daughter to the scene of the fight. He says that she jumped from the back seat, ran behind an SUV, and re-emerged fighting the other girl. One of the 911 calls mentioned that the kids were fighting and that the adults were just standing around watching. If that's true, it will be interesting to see if prosecutors pursue any criminal charges against the stepfather. While he did not directly participate in the killing of his daughter, an argument could be made that he should be partially responsible for child endangerment if he intentionally drove his daughter to participate in the fight. Ultimately, the suspect, whose name was not released due to her age, was charged with one count of murder. It is not known whether she'll be charged as a juvenile or as an adult. Whew, that one's dark. Now to Florida, 2015. It was a case of law and odor when police arrested a woman who attacked her husband for farting. Florida woman Don Michael, 55, was lying in bed with her husband Donald just after 3 a.m. on December 11th when she elbowed him in the arm for passing gas between the sheets. Ah oh, yes, the old Dutch oven. Those of us who are married know it well. When Donald ignored her pleas to hold the farts in, Michael began to kick him until he eventually got out of bed, according to police records. But after clearing the air, literally, Donald hopped back into bed, and the flurry of flatulence continued. Donald says his wife began another round of kicking and elbowing him, according to the affidavit. Donald told police he tried to stop Michael by restraining her for her own safety and received scratches on his chest during the kerfuffle. Michael got a split lip but told police her husband did not punch her. He was restraining me, she said, and somehow my lip got split open. As the fight escalated, Michael retreated into the couple's bathroom and called police, using pepper spray to keep her husband at bay. Police arrived and arrested Michael. She was taken to the St. Lucie County Jail and charged with misdemeanor battery charges. She has since been released. Okay, for the next one, we're staying in Florida for an assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill, all over a little bit of crop dusting. In Dania Beach, Florida, a woman faced an aggravated assault charge after authorities say she passed gas in line at a dollar store and pulled a knife on a man who complained about it. Citing a Broward Sheriff's Office report, the Miami Herald reported that 37-year-old Shanetta Yvette Wilson passed gas while waiting in line at a Dollar General and upset a nearby customer. The report says the offended customer and Wilson then got into an argument in reference to, quote, the defendant farting loudly. The report says that Wilson then pulled a small folding knife out of her purse and told the victim she was going to, quote, gut him, unquote, while moving as if to attack him. Wilson was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, without intent to kill. Oh, I had that wrong at the top. Without, not with, intent to kill. Although, she said she was going to gut him, that would most likely kill him. It was unclear at the time whether Wilson had a lawyer. Next, we'll jump forward to a fart-triggered assault from January of 2020, when a Wichita Falls man was arrested after allegedly assaulting his girlfriend when she commented on him passing gas. According to the Wichita Falls Police Department, an arrest warrant affidavit states that officers responded to a disturbance around 2 p.m. on a Sunday in the 3500 block of Cranbrook Lane. At the residence, the victim said she and her boyfriend, a uh, Ragsdale, were sitting on the couch at a friend's house. According to the affidavit, Ragsdale farted and his girlfriend commented that it, quote, smelled horrible, unquote. I'm sure it did. The 41-year-old Ragsdale allegedly got angry and grabbed the victim by her hair and pulled her to the ground. 
The victim said she landed on her stomach, and Ragsdale wrapped his arms around her neck to choke her. She stated that she could barely breathe. Next, we have a South Korean gas attack that inspired an attempted murder in August of 2020. A taxi driver has been arrested for wielding a weapon while arguing with a passenger who kept farting, who would not stop farting. On August 3rd, 2020, the Yonjai police station in Busan revealed that they had requested an arrest warrant for a taxi driver in his 50s on charges of attempted murder. The taxi driver, a Mr. A, is suspected of stabbing a passenger in his 20s with a weapon more than 10 times on the road near Mangmi Station in Soyang, Busan. The passenger, a Mr. B, is currently being treated at a hospital, or was currently in 2020, being treated at a hospital for serious injuries such as damaged organs. But his life was not at risk. According to the police, Mr. A opened the window and warned Mr. B to be mindful of his farts as Mr. B constantly farted during the taxi ride. However, Mr. B became offended and argued back. This is when the argument started between the taxi driver and the passenger. Now the driver, Mr. A, had a knife used for fishing in his car because he'd kept it in order to go fishing the next day. And Mr. A then used that knife to wield as a weapon against Mr. B and stabbed him multiple, as in ten, times. Mr. A stated, quote, I think I lost my rationality momentarily, as he admitted to his crimes. A police officer stated, quote, We have charged him with attempted murder, not with inflicting bodily injury, considering that it was a brutal crime, including the fact that he wielded the weapon and stabbed the victim several times. I think several is an understatement if he stabbed him ten times. Imagine we're talking about eating hard-boiled eggs instead of stabbing someone. It's not hard to imagine someone saying that they ate several hard-boiled eggs. It's pretty tough to imagine someone eating 10 hard-boiled eggs at once. So again, several is an understatement when it comes to the number 10. All right, now that we've covered fart murder for the last decade of recent history, we're going to talk about some historical examples of the grievous consequences of cutting the cheese. The impact of great farts throughout history has not been limited to weird and disproportionate consequences such as the triggering of widespread mayhem, death, and destruction. More on that in a minute. Farts have also wrecked political careers and destroyed social standings. A prime example of that can be seen in the social faux pas, or more like fart pas, of Elizabethan-era aristocrat Edward de Vere, 17th Earl of Oxford. Reportedly, while making a deep bow to show his respect and obeisance to Queen Elizabeth I, this Earl of Oxford exploded in a huge fart. He felt so embarrassed and ashamed that he left the country for seven years, and when he finally came home, the Queen's first words upon his return to court were, My lord, I had forgot the fart. Ah, that Queen Elizabeth. What a noxious wit she had. Almost as noxious as the 17th Earl of Oxford's ass. Now we go further back in time to the Arabian Peninsula in the Middle Ages to further explore the catastrophic fallout of ill-timed ass blasting. As the Earl of Oxford's fart illustrates, breaking wind in public was embarrassing in the court of Elizabeth I. However, such embarrassment pales in comparison to the social consequences of a public fart in the Arabian Peninsula. In the Middle Ages, a wealthy Yemeni merchant named Abu Hassan married one of the region's most beautiful women and threw a lavish wedding feast to which he invited notables from near and far. As is customary, the bridegroom ate and drank heartily at the feast, perhaps too heartily, for when he rose from his seat to go to his bride's chamber, he let out a thunderous fart. Mortified, Abu Hassan turned away from the bridal chamber, headed to the courtyard, saddled his horse, and rode off into the night, weeping bitterly. It was the start of a weird and long journey and exile that would put the Earl of Oxford to shame. After fleeing his wedding, mortified at the humiliation of his huge fart, Abu Hassan ended up on the coast where he caught a ship headed for India, landing on the Malabar coast. He eventually joined the service of a local king and rose in his service. After a decade abroad, however, Abu Hassan pined for his homeland. Finally, he snuck away and returned to Yemen. But unsure of his reception, he donned the disguise of an impoverished dervish and headed back to his hometown. Abu Hassan endured many weird and wacky adventures en route, surviving encounters with lions, enduring snake bites, and hiding from bloodthirsty bandits. Eventually, he reached his hometown and his eyes brimmed with tears when he looked down upon it from the surrounding hills. However, 
He was wary of the type of reception he might encounter, and he told himself, they might recognize me. So I will wander about the outskirts and listen to what people are saying. May Allah grant that they do not remember what happened. But Allah did not grant Abu Hassan's wish. Disguised as a dervish, he wandered around his hometown for a week, eavesdropping on people on the chance he might hear any mention of his name. Finally, sitting near the door of a hut, he overheard a young girl ask her mother, When was I born, Mama? One of my friends needs the date so she can cast my fortune. The mother replied, My dear, you were born on the night that Abu Hassan farted. A bitterly disappointed Abu Hassan rose and immediately fled his hometown once more, this time for good. As he put it, quote, My fart has become a date. It will be remembered forever. <laughs> My God, can you imagine blasting such a notorious wedding fart that people remembered their children's birthdays by it? Holy moly. Hassan eventually made his way back to India, where he remained in self-imposed exile for the rest of his life. Well, they do say that the root of all comedy is tragedy. All right, for our grand finale, or grand fart nally, it's time to talk about the deadliest fart in recorded human history. And for that, we head back to ancient times in Jerusalem, 44 AD. History's deadliest fart was smelt and dealt around the time of Passover in 44 AD in Jerusalem, not long after the death of King Herod Agrippa. As thousands of Jews gathered to partake in the Passover feast and festivities, a Roman soldier stationed above the temple turned around, bared his butt, mooned the crowd, and cut a fart. Understandably, the religious crowd below did not take kindly to the blasphemous insult in the temple. Rioting broke out, and the Romans rushed in soldiers to quell the disturbance. Things escalated, and by the time the dust settled, approximately 10,000 people lay dead, all because of a chain of events that started with a fart. The Jewish historian Flavius Josephus left posterity an account of the lethal posterior emission. He described it as such. The Jews' ruin came on, for when the multitudes were come together to Jerusalem to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and a Roman cohort stood over the cloisters of the temple, for they were always armed and kept guard at the festivals to prevent any innovation by which the multitude thus gathered might take. That's some old-timey Romanish speak there, but basically he's saying there were always Roman guards watching over the large Jewish festivals, just in case people got rowdy. In this case, the guard incited a riot with his musical ass. Here's what the historian says. One of the soldiers pulled back his garment and, cowering down in an indecent manner, turned his ass to the Jews and spoke such words as you might expect at such a posture. Spoke such words means he farted. At this, the whole multitude had indignation and made a clamored ecumenist, the provincial Roman procurator, that he would punish the soldier, while the rasher part of the youth, and such as were naturally the most tumultuous, fell to fighting and caught up stones and threw them at the soldiers. It was the start of a bout of widespread violence and a weird chain of events leading to mass death. In other words, everyone was offended by this soldier farting over their religious ceremony, which they should be offended by, mind you. The more level-headed parishioners petitioned that the soldier be punished, while the younger people, less even-tempered, immediately started brawling. Things escalated quickly as the Romans, never known for a light touch when dealing with disturbances in their provinces, came down hard on the Jews. As historian Josephus continued in his account, when the Roman procurator heard of the rioting in Jerusalem, Humanus was afraid lest all the people should make an assault upon him and sent to call for even more men, who, when they came in great numbers into the cloisters, found the Jewish people in a very great consternation. Being beaten out of the temple, they ran into the city, and the violence which they crowded to get out was so great that they trod upon each other and squeezed one another, till ten thousand of them were killed, insomuch that this feast became the cause for mourning in the whole nation, and every family lamented. Now, in truth, this is a pretty tragic story. You had a town full of Jewish people, peaceably celebrating their religious holiday, some asshole Roman drops his drawers and blasts some ass at them while they're celebrating Passover. That is horrible, so obnoxious. And they were so offended that a riot started. Well, between the riot and the ensuing 
excessive force of the Romans' military response, 10,000 people in Jerusalem died. That is a serious case of fart murder. And I suppose it shouldn't even really be chuckled at, except the short version of the story is, Soldier Moon's religious crowd blasts ass, ensuing riot kills 10,000. I mean, it's absurd. <laughs> uh, man. There you have it, folks. That is kind of murderies. Fart murder. Now, before I let you go, I'd like to remind you, as I always do, or often do, of the free three-digit lifeline number 988 that you can call anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to receive immediate counseling for substance use, mental health, or suicidal thoughts. So, God forbid, but if you should find yourself in acute crisis, please do remember to call 988. Program it into your phone now. Please do get the help that you need. And always remember that the world is a better place with you in it. Now, if you're not in acute crisis and you'd just like to connect with someone, please do feel free to reach out to me, kindamurdery at gmail.com or at kindamurdery on all social media. Don't reach out to me if you're in a dire situation because I'm really not qualified to help you with that. But if you just want someone to talk to, if you'd like to tell your story of disability or other challenges, if you'd like to tell a kind of murdery story, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to connect with you. I'm here. I care. And it means a lot to me when you guys reach out. Also, don't forget to call our toll-free number, 888-MURDERY, where you can tell your kind of murdery story and inspire an episode of the show. I'll see you back here on Sunday, April 9th. I'm Zevin Odelberg, and this has been Kinda Murdery. Oh, my God.